Hello, uh, my name's Henry Ward uh, and I'm an artist. Um, as you can see, I'm not sat in my studio. Uh, I'm sat, in fact, I'm sat at my kitchen table. So what I'm gonna do today is talk to you a little bit about how you can go about making sculpture uh, in the home when you can't leave the home. Uh, now in my case, uh, this is to do with something that's part of my practice anyway. Although I have a studio that I go to and I, I'm generally a painter, I also work on this table and I make small objects that I call my kitchen table sculptures. So what I'm going to do today is talk a bit about how you might be doing something yourselves at home that could be a bit inspired by this idea, uh, to occupy you, to release some of your creative potential. Uh, now often people think about sculpture as needing lots of space and they think about it as being something that requires expensive equipment, lots of materials and so on. But what I'm going to do today is show you how in fact you can make sculptures uh, from the most banal materials that you find around you. Um, found materials, what we'd call in art found materials, so rather than clay and plaster and wax and so on, things that you might make sculpture out of more traditionally, uh, found materials have been, I suppose really in lots of ways, the predominant materials used in sculpture for about the last hundred years, starting with people like Duchamp and Picasso, who began to use objects that already existed to make sculptures. And in somebody like Picasso's case, that was fantastically invented. We think about things like the, the infamous bull's head that he made from uh, a saddle and a set of handlebars that he found on a, a bicycle and a rubbish tip. And he talked about how when he saw the saddle and the handlebars, he saw a bull's head. Uh, and when he hung it on the wall, he anticipated that in the future, somebody might see the bull's head and say, if I took that apart, it would make the most wonderful handlebars and saddle for my bicycle. So there's a lovely kind of story and inventiveness in this. My own sculptures are quite abstract. Um, and with kitchen table sculptures, uh, such as these, I, uh, I use material which I find when I'm walking around the street. So stuff that I pick up off the floor, uh, it, just discarded. This, I suppose it's the sort of things that we would call rubbish. Uh, now, unfortunately, at the moment, due to the current circumstances, I can't encourage you, I shouldn't be encouraging you, and I'm not encouraging you to, uh, to go outside and to, to find materials there. But it's remarkable what you can find in your home. So, um, I've been around the house uh, just now and I've picked up all sorts of uh, bits and pieces. There's a, an old inhaler from my, one of my daughters. Uh, there's a little brick there that I found on the side, a little off of wood. Um, uh, grater there that came in a cracker, one of those things knocking around, a thimble. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, an object using these things uh, and I'm going to use the same rules, one of the same sets of rules that I do when I'm making my sculptures normally, which is that I'm not going to use any other materials such as glue and so on to, to attach these sculptures together. So this is very much about thinking about how materials relate to one another, uh, thinking about how things balance, uh, wedge, wrapped around and so on. Um, now one of the things that I'm interested in when I'm, when I'm making objects is how materials speak to one another, um, how one material might, uh, might relate to another one. Um, in fact, I kind of often think about how that might be uh, in relation to say somebody like the artist Brancusi. Um, and Brancusi was very interested in this idea about how one material might sit and play with another material, the, the way in which for example, um, uh, marble might look next to wood and how those two things sit together. And I think that's something that when you're playing around with uh, objects in this kind of way, uh, you can start to think about. In order to, to do this, in order to kind of play around with this, uh, it's important not to, be, not to be too precious. It's important to try things out. Um, it's important not to be afraid of mistakes. That's vital in any art making process. Um, and personally, I'm, I'm not really interested in making something that looks like something else. Um, part of the reason for creating uh, kitchen table sculptures in the first place was to find something which may eventually uh, find its way into one of my paintings. And as a painter who makes things which are uh, broadly described as abstract, uh, I was interested in something which was much more about the formal relationship, uh, one thing sitting next to another. So that's my, my primary goal when I'm creating an object like this. Uh, but you might decide you want to make something that does look like something else. And of course, if we think back to the things I was showing earlier, here's another example by uh, Picasso of uh, this is the head of a woman. And you can see here he's used a colander, it's amazing, uh, to make the sort of bulk of the head and so on. And there's something rather lovely about how you can see both the figure, the, the female figure that he's created, and at the same time you can see the object that he's made it from. You can see elastic bands are hugely important here. Um, hoping you've all got plenty knocking around your house. Let's 
let's see, I think maybe, maybe that's, is that going to stay like that? I think it does. There we go. So I think, I think I'm going to stop there. Um, so good luck. Uh, have a go. See what happens. I think as well what I'd like to say at this point is lots and lots of places are uh, inspiring people at the moment and trying things since we've all been locked inside. Um, the Yorkshire Sculpture International team uh, set up a project a little while ago called A Sculpture A Day, uh, which is encouraging people to make sculptures in five minutes, much similar to what I've just shown you. So if you do have a go at this, please do link it into Isolation Art School. Do also link it into A Sculpture A Day and tag both Isolation Art School and YSI uh, to, uh, to make sure that, we're, that we're, we're seeing the results of what you do. And then good luck. Now, what I'd like to do is just finish up uh, by talking about uh, how you might display your sculpture and how you might document it. Because one of the things that's uh, interesting about an object, this of course, is they are quite um, ephemeral. They're not, you know, the rubber band will rot, things will shift. Uh, sometimes you might make something which is literally relying on balance. Um, but it's nice to document what you're doing. So make sure you take a photograph of your sculpture uh, when you've finished it. Um, and I'm just going to finish today's lesson by talking a little bit about how you can make that photograph look as professional as possible. Uh, if you take your, your sculpture and you, you take a piece of paper, one moment. So you take this paper, just an ordinary A4 sheet of paper like this, get yourself some masking tape, and then what you want to do is find something that you can attach the paper to, just one moment. So we're in the kitchen, uh, so I'm going to use a coffee pot here, and uh, what I'm going to do is make something that's called an infinity backdrop. Now an infinity backdrop means that you take your sheet of paper and you're going to create a gentle curve like this so that there's no uh, point where the floor and the background uh, are differentiated. And I'm just going to use a little bit of tape there like that to just uh, hold that in place like so. And then by doing that and placing my object on the background like that, uh, you can see that I can take a nice photograph of it and uh, it'll look all professional. So when you finish your sculptures, make your little infinity backdrop, set up your camera, take a photograph and upload it. Uh, good luck and stay safe.